G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, look it's going to be a nice clear sunny day today, um, 22 degrees, they said 7 or 8 this morning, um, yeah it could have been but they reckon it felt like 3.5 or 4 or something like that. So, um, so yeah look it's not too bad, be a good working day when the sun comes out later. Um, I did get my trusty work jacket out, my old high vis from when I used to work for a living. <laughs> um, I don't get it out, of, oh, I get it out every year but I, I don't wear it that often. Um, sometimes if I know I'm going out and about in the field I, I take it but it sort of sits over the, over the seat on the, on the ute and um, the blue bloody dog hops in and leans on it half the time so um, I'm always dusting it off. So I've just got it sitting on the vice, I did get it out this morning um, for some reason I felt it cold today. Um, Saturday was a cold bugger of a day. Um, I don't know what the temperature was, but um, you know, probably 16, 17 or something like that in the afternoon and it was drizzly and um, yeah, I was feeling crook and we just about lunchtime went up the front there and lit the fire in the pool room and shut the doors down and Watched a bit of TV and had a snooze in the chair and um, yeah, about three o'clock put a roast on the Ziggy, which is like a Weber type thing, a gas, gas power thing. Um, put a roast on there and just let it cook away and had dinner and yeah, that was the day done. But um, yeah, I had one of those weeks where I seemed busy all the time, but I didn't get much done and that's fine. Um, I sort of don't worry about that too much nowadays, it's always tomorrow and um, yeah I, I started off, I, I had that um, club committee meeting up in the pool room and that went well, we all brought our manners with us and, the, and that was a good meeting. Um, but I pushed along Monday morning to get the injectors done on the um, 414 engine and the video will be out this week for that um, and with that um, the club didn't want to buy new nozzles because you know the club's on a budget and, and um, so a couple of the nozzles were leaking and um, they weren't real good at all. So I pulled them apart, cleaned them, um, tidied them all up best I could, bead blasted all the housings and things like that, you know the, the nozzle holders and things like that and um, I had a couple of them that come good straight away but I had one of them well, you think I could get that damn thing to seal properly? And I ended up lapping it. And look, you can buy this CAV, and look, this come with my injector tester when I bought it off the old fella. But it's CAV nozzle lapping paste. And it says nozzle lapping paste, medium grit. The part number, the CAV number is 7044 forward slash 981A. And yeah, I tried cleaning and bloody, you know, um, tidying up with carbon cleaner and, um, and brake cleaner, things like that. And I, I couldn't get it 100% and I ended up lapping them. And I put some of that in, I just lapped the seats and lapped and buggered around with them. And um, one of them had a really sticky needle and I, I, I was really flat pulling it out with a pair of pliers. And, um, and it was just gummed up, you know, just that you get that diesel varnish. So um, I got them out, got them freed up, lapped them all. But one injector, I, I had it apart about four times. Four, well, I think it was a good four times. Um, I just couldn't get that nice round you know, squirt, you know, the atomization. Um, but anyway, look, it come good in the end. Um, but yeah, I was getting a bit frustrated with it. Um, I did the stew, then I thought, right, I'll knock these injectors over. And normally an injector, you know, if you spent an hour on an injector, you'd be buggering around a bit. And, um, but, you know, I spend extra time bead blasting the housings and, you know, things like that, the, the nozzle holders and things and the nuts and get the carbon out and do all that sort of thing. So I suppose I do spend a bit longer. But, um, yeah, we had the meeting here at 2 o'clock, the, um, the club committee meeting at 2 o'clock. And... Um, it, it took me right up till just after lunchtime to do these bloody four injectors. Um, six hours in total for four injectors. And um, yeah, but they, they are chirping off beautifully now. Um, yeah, they're really good. 
and um, yeah, you, you set the nozzle, you set the pressure. They were at, all at 150 atmospheres, but um, I found that 150 atmospheres on the Pintox nozzle, I couldn't get that, that crispness you know, of a chirp on an injector that I like. Um, I popped them up to 2400, and look, oh, which was 160, oh, I'll talk atmospheres, because my gauge goes atmospheres. It was 150 atmospheres, and I had to put it to 160 atmospheres to get that crisp chirp um, coming out. So I'm sure they're good. So yeah, when Tony, the, the vice president of the club, um, he come for the meeting, I was able to give him the injection pump back, um, some glow plugs that I had here for him, and the injectors, and they've all gone back. And so he asked me would I go and help put the liners in the engine on, I think Wednesday or Thursday we decided to do that. Thursday probably. And so we whizzed out there and I got the liners in for him. And um, I do have the valves. He sent the valves home to see if I could pop them in the lathe up the front there and tidy them up. Um, as you know, I sold my valve grinders. Um, I found the valves I'm doing lately, I'm just um, popping them in the lathe. I'm getting a lovely finish with a you know, pointy, I've got a real pointy carbide tip and it does them beautifully. So um, yeah, so I'll get them done when I can. Um, depends what time allows and we go from there. Um, Saturday, yeah, Friday I was going all right. I was buggering around. I've been, I've been buggering around up the other end with a board for Jeff and um, yeah, um, Jeff sent me through a, a file to see if I could burn it, you know, see if I could decipher it into laser talk. <laughs> and um, yeah, look, I, I got it at work there and yeah, I just, I put it through and I, I ended up um, getting it into an SVG file so we could work with it. And um, yeah, I, I tried burning a little, um, uh, just a little glass um, coaster is the word I'm looking for. But some of the lines in it where the words were, were that fine. Um, sitting it up behind a light there, it's, it's lovely, but when you put it down on the table, it's not real good. So, um, but anyway, I had, a, had an old board there out of a bit of um, beach, and I thought, I'll just try it on that. So I put it on that, and look, it, it come up nice. Um, the, I've, do, I've done a double on the riding to try and get it a bit thicker, and um, yeah, you've got to get your glasses on to see it, I think. <laughs> and anyway, I've done another one. Um, that was a bit of fluffing around. Um, see, when, when you set the laser up, I can set the laser up and the file's taken about an hour and a half to burn because I've got it nice and slow so it does a nice etch. And so um, all I have to do is um, jump on the laser, do a shape, whatever shape I like, you know, the circle or the, the rectangle for the board, set it up in that line so I know it's all lined up and press go and I just piss off and do my own thing. And every so often I'll pop over and have a look, make sure it's, you know, nothing's going wrong. But um, even though it takes an hour and a half per burn, I'm doing other stuff. So I'm not just sitting there watching it, you know, wasting the day. So, um, so anyway, I'll show you that a bit later. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so the week started with me doing the, doing the injectors. We had our committee meeting. Then um, Tuesday I got the solenoid for the, start, for the rider mower. And um, so I come home Tuesday afternoon and I got the lawn mower serviced. Um, I put the new starter solenoid on. I put the new battery in. Jude had it work there for me for Tuesday. So I put the battery in the rider mower. Then I hadn't done the roundup run, you know, just to um, clean up the weeds. And they were getting, a, like on the loading ramp and things like that, they were getting a bit out of hand. And um, so I, I cranked the mower up and off I went around the paddock for the afternoon and I got all the roundupping finished. Which was good, um, yeah, it wasn't a bad thing. And then, um, yeah, Friday, or, or through the week, I started sanding the Massey MF20 bonnet. And we're gonna go up and have a talk about that shortly. And, um, but I was hoping to get the carryall frame painted. But uh, on Saturday morning, I had a look at paint, no, Friday, Friday, I had a look at painting it and I had a look and I thought, no, that's not quite prepared properly yet. So um, I took it outside and I started sanding again and I've, I've made it a lot better now and I've, I've got some of the rust converter on and maybe today I might get a coat of paint on that. Um, we'll see how we go. Um, but 
yeah, Saturday morning I, I had a coffee and come up the back here and I started getting this bloody ache in the right in the bottom of my belly where the where my belt goes. And I oh, thought, God, and you know, I'm usually a pretty energetic sort of bugger, <laughs> even though I do sit in the chair a bit. Um, and it just got worse and worse, and I thought, oh, like I had appendicitis once, and it was nearly like that. And um, yeah, it felt like you needed to go to the toilet, and you whiz up there to go to the toilet, and nothing. You know, you, you felt like you're going to have diarrhoea coming on, but um, but you didn't. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, up this, and, and um, I thought, I wonder should I go up to the hospital? And I thought, oh, imagine sitting up there for bloody hours on end. And um, so I didn't go. And um, I sat in the door there and I had a bit of a sleep in the chair in the sun and, um, well, there was a bit of sun. <laughs> anyway, I thought, oh, this is being lazy, but I didn't, I didn't have the mind to do anything in the shed here. So um, I read the weather and it said it's going to rain Saturday afternoon. And I thought, well, how bad can this pain in the guts be? I better hop on the mower. <laughs> so I jumped on the rider mower and I got all the mowing up near the house done and all the driveway and all that sort of stuff. And, by then it was lunchtime, and yeah, I was feeling pretty ordinary, and um, so that's when I parked up for the day. I thought, oh bugger that, that's enough, and went up the house and we lit the fire and sat there, and I chopped a bit of wood, and um, actually I cut up a few pallets for kindling for the wood. You think you don't do anything, but when you, you've had to write it down, you're probably busy. And um, then Sunday, yesterday, I thought, oh, a bit of a steady start, and we went to Bunnings to get some timber for the carryall, and the old timber on the carryall was Tasmanian oak, which is not a bad, you know, harder wood sort of thing. But I can remember paying about $16, $17 per board. Well, we went to Bunnings to buy the boards, $34 a board, and I need about nine of them. I've got to run them down. And last time we just used the metric sizes and we drilled a couple of holes to go metric. But um, this time... Um, I'm going to actually cut them to the four inch boards and use the original holes, I believe. Um, but, <clears throat> but yeah, I nearly fell over. Like, you know, 300 bucks just for the boards on the, um, it would have been $340 roughly for the boards by the time you have a couple of skinny ones. And um, I've got some to cut down. You know, you've got a little step and you've got to route the back of them and all that. And then um, I thought, oh, bugger that. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't quite do that, you know. And, I had them all loaded on my trolley and I said to dude up this, I just can't, you know, we're just going to put pine on. So um, I've got a heap of pine boards there, $17 a board. Um, and for what I do, it's going to be fine. It might mark a little easier than the hardwood, um, but I'm just going to put pine on it. I'm going to seal it with an epoxy of some kind, um, probably the same epoxy I used on the stand for the club engine, um, that three horsepower famous. And I got a hinge, uh, I had one hinge for the famous sign and I bought another one, just uh, I, I could actually find a nice black hinge that um, the other ones I bought I was never happy with really, so, <coughs> pardon me. So um, yeah, so we come home from Bunnings and I thought, oh right, I'll go up the shed and dick around and yeah, look, all I did, I welded a couple of nuts on the carryall and I was going to get into the timber and I thought, oh. Bugger this, I just, I don't know, just no go. Just, you know, which is un, unusual for me, really. Um, I'm usually, even though I mightn't be breaking any records, I'm always busy, but I, I just couldn't get into it. So, um, yeah, went up the house, watched Landline, and then Mum said she was coming out, and Adele was here, and then um, Tim had a, some band practice um, for their band, so we had Freya for the afternoon. So, yeah, so the weekend was pretty well a write-off. <laughs> I got a bit of mowing done and a bit of sanding done and a couple of nuts welded on the carryall and things like that. Um, where the carryall comes around at the back and it's got a couple of little loops where they used to probably put hungry boards in, jam them in. Um, for this rally I'm sort of tasked with organising, um, I want to be able to put a sign down there so inside those hoops I've welded a couple of nuts so I can screw something in and hold the sign firm, um, stop it wobbling around. So. So I've done that. Um, I went to Trade Tools through the week and they had this lovely little seat there and they had it on special the week before for um, $69, I think it was. And it's, um, it's a Trade Tools, it's a Renegade brand, which 
Yeah, those who know my big toolbox there, that's a Renegade one too, so that's where I go. But look at this, I can actually put my three favourite CRC products in the front there. And it's got wheels and it's got three little drawers so you can pop a shift and spanner and a plier and, you know, just something. And I find with me dicky knee, I sort of do sit down a lot now. And it's on wheels and it's got a little tray on the other side, just a little tray so deep. And um, I just thought for the money it was cheap, it keeps all this tidy, it gives me a place to put a couple of nuts and bolts or whatever. They're not, look, they're fairly thin. Um, they're not the big sturdy things, but look, they're not, I think it's 110 kilo weight load. Um, so I'll have to breathe in <laughs> um, or breathe out one or the other. And um, but I just thought around the shed here to be a handy thing. And, um, I assembled it up in the house there, up at the pool room yesterday. A young Freya was sitting up on it watching TV, with sitting on here with the feet on here, and it just sort of suited her nicely. So, um, yeah, we, we um, I, I thought I'd better get it up here, because um, once it stayed down there, if the kids liked it, it'd probably have to stay there. So, anyway. But look, I'm going to shift the camera in here. I'm going to go for a walk around. And, um, oh, the... Freya sits on the 135 and likes to pretend she's driving and go beep, beep and all that sort of thing. Well, um, Ariana, the oldest granddaughter, um, she was on it the other day and buggering around and she must have left the light switch on one click for the dash lights only. And I didn't pick it up. And yeah, Freya hops on this yesterday and the horn wouldn't work. And I'm thinking, what the bloody hell? And the battery was dead flat, absolutely gone. And um, I put the battery charger on, the battery charger didn't want to have a, go, have a look at it and said, nah, there's nothing there to work with. So um, I ended up getting another battery there, putting some jumper leads on, and then putting the battery charger on the two batteries, and that way the battery charger, charger sensed that it needed to fire up because um, it must have been that flat, just with a little dash light flattening it, that... Um, the battery charger wouldn't recognise it and it thought it had no battery on the end of it. So it's probably shortened the life of that battery some. Um, they don't like getting that flat. But, um, but yeah, by jumping the leads across to it, um, yeah, it, it sort of worked nicely. It ended up coming good. Well, I think so. I haven't had a look this morning, but the charger yesterday afternoon, um, I took the extra battery off and just left the charger on and the charger recognised that there was a battery there and started charging. So I'm presuming it's going to be nice and full, so we'll go and have a look. But um, yeah, look, I've, I've got something to show you up the other end there and we'll do the walk around and um, yeah, we'll have a bit of a chat up the other end. Okay, we're up the other end of the shed. Fancy that. And those of you who have been following the... Um, Massey Ferguson 20 series, um, you'll know that the I've been working on the bonnet, tidying it up, and um, it's had quite a bit of surface rust um, on the top of it and around it. And so I was watching Facebook the other day, and there's a few people you run into in Facebook, and one bloke I, I watch often, um, just on his Facebook thing, needs a YouTube channel, I reckon, is Rich Beastie Beeson. And Rich is, um, he, does, he does tractors up. He buys tractors that need a bit of work, need a paint job and um, need a bit of restoration. And he does them up and look, they bloody sparkle, they're eh? beautiful. Um, yeah, Rich, geez, I wish I could paint half as good as you do. Um, but the other day he bought a Ford and he bought a little David Brown crop master. And I'm sending him, you know, yeah, the crop masters have a, have a wide seat in there, a cuddle seat. And I'm telling him, get the missus up there and, you know, you'd be able to go for a coffee and bug around like that. But he got this crop master in and, look, within a day sort of thing, a day or so on Facebook anyway, um, yeah, he had the bonnet really tidy looking and the surface rust was gone and it's just a nice patina on it. And so I got on to Rich and I said, oh, um, what did you use there? And he said, just um, um, steel wool. I think that's what it's called worldwide. And WD-40. Well, he should have used bloody CRC. But anyway, I'll, we'll talk to him about that later. But, 
<laughs> but um, look, it, it come up nice. It got rid of the um, it got rid of the surface rust on the bonnet on the nose cone that you could see, and it had gone back to like a slight um, or right right on the corner where they wear um, when you're doing that stuff, and where the paint gets thin if the sun's on the corner. Um, it was sort of back to a primer, but it had a lovely sheen to it. So I got onto him. And that's what he said he'd done, and I thought, well, I'm going to have a crack at that on my Massey Ferguson 20. And so what I've done here, I didn't use, I didn't, I didn't have the steel wool, but I'm just using, look, CRC 556, that's this stuff. I'm just using that stuff. Now, if you wanted to use um, any penetrate, something like that, you know, CRC penetrate, something like that, you wouldn't use anything else apart from CRC. But um, so what I've been doing is I've got a bit of 1200 sandpaper and what I like to use for a, um, a rubbing block so you don't get finger marks is I go and buy a flip flop and I use a flip flop so, or a thong, we call them thongs in Australia. And I chop the thong up into pieces and I hold the sandpaper in that and the reason I like that is because when you want to go around the corner you can actually bend it um, to, instead of blocking it out with a solid block when you get to the corner you can actually go across the corner and then and you can sort of bend the bend the rubbing block a little bit to go over the corner and it's nice and soft. This one, they do get a bit hard in time, so I just chuck them out and get another one and away we go. But um, because of Rich, <laughs> I, was, I was on Facebook, I was blaming him for the afternoon. But look, all I do, I just give it a, give it a good dampening down with the CRC and I just come in with the you come in with the paper like that and go down over the edge and I don't go straight up and down I always just sort of go on an angle across and then when I come back this way I come around the corner that way and look it's come up lovely um, it's a messy job um, yeah I get you get yellow all over you but um when you look at it there, that patina um, is quite nice. Like you, um, the rust has gone off the top of the bonnet, and I put on Facebook on, on the Facebook page. I actually put a photo with the piece that I'd done plus a piece that I haven't done, and I don't want to unclamp this. I've got it all clamped now and down now, so I don't want to pull it apart. But um, what I'm thinking of doing with it is. Um, people say about the oily rag on the paintwork and things like that, well um, uh, I wasn't going to do the oily rag, I was going to have it like this so you can just, you can just see it's, I think on the camera you can see a little line, yeah that there, that's the primer, um, and some places you have to go back almost to the primer, but look that looks fine, I'm happy with that, um, along the side here there's a couple of pieces where we've got, had to go to the primer to get rid of it. But what I'm going to do is once I've got the whole thing sanded, um, I'm going to take it out and give it a really good wash, um, yeah, a real soapy wash, get all the um, CRC off it. And I'm actually going to polish it. And the idea is that, um, well, when, when, when you have this rough finish, um, you know, the, everyone knows the, the surface rust finish. When you have that finish, because it's rough, if it's outside, it absorbs moisture and it just gets worse and worse over time. So what my goal is, I don't want to paint this tractor yet. Um, not saying that we're not going to paint it down the track, um, which we may do. I just don't want to start that yet. I just want to um, get it all together and um, get this bonnet finished off and get it back on and... Um, get it out running around. Um, I, I don't want to do a full restoration or anything like that on it. But, um, but so with tidying the surface rust up off it, giving it this nice patina, 
and putting a good, say, Karuba wax polish, kitten wax or something like that. Um, see our CO and kitten and they've given me some up the back there, so put a good kitten polish on top of it. Well, that way, um, any bare metal areas will have a bit of something on top of them. And if it's out in the weather a little bit, I say I take it to a show or something and it's got to sit out overnight, well, you're not getting the uh, moisture back into the paint. So we'll see how we go. Well, look, I've, I'm very pleased with that. And um, yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, I was blaming him through the week. I said, oh, bloody Rich, yeah, blame Rich for me wasting this whole afternoon. But the whole afternoon, I've only got the top and down to about there done. And yeah, I had to had to finish for the day and go and do other stuff. But um, hopefully today, well, I was going to do it on the weekend, but hopefully today um, I can spend a little bit of time on the carryall. I'd like to get a paint coat of paint on the carryall, and I'd like to actually sand this back um, and get this how I want it. Um, but it, geez, it takes some time up. Yeah, by the time you know, I've got the sides to do and under the the front apron to do and. The whole lot, so it's going to take a while. Um, no worries, just put the radio on and kick back. But um, yeah, look, thanks, Rich. Um, you gave me the inspiration to do this um, after watching your tractor, and I thought, God, that's a lovely look. Um, yeah, I'll, um, I might monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> so um, thanks again. Now, um, Rich got on to me, and is um, we're having a bit of a bit of a quick little chat and um, he's got something coming for me and I'm very excited for this and um, yeah you'll uh, look you'll, you'll love seeing it and um, it's just a lovely gesture and um, so yeah another good mate and that's what YouTube does for you um, we have mates all over the world you know we might not sit down and have a beer every day or ever and um, but you do meet bloody nice people just because of YouTube that you wouldn't have run into before and um, yeah, this is that's the case here. So um, yeah, thanks again, Rich. I'm looking forward to the uh, little surprise parcel coming my way. I'll put it on the stew for sure. Um, yeah, but anyway, you're getting the rap. You're getting blamed. <laughs> but I'm glad I I'm glad I copied and, and, and did it. It's it's nice to have a look at. So I'll go handheld in a minute. We'll do the the end of stew walk around and. I'll be able to show you the parts that I haven't done with the camera, the parts I've done. I've got the pine down there, I've got the carry all over here that hasn't gone outside yet. So we'll go handheld and um, yeah, we'll have a bit of a bit of a walk around. I'll show you what I've been up to. Okay, so while we're on the bonnet, I'll just come in close there. You can see where to get rid of the rust, we've just gone through in a couple of places into the primer. But look, I I reckon that's a good look. You go to a hot rod show lately and you certainly have a fair bit of that to look at. Um, yeah, you can see it's a bit messy down the side, but I do have to do down the bottom, along the front, um, all in through here. I wish I didn't tidy that bit up there now, but anyway, what's done is done. But that's the difference. So, yeah, this here, it'll absorb moisture and Look, it's got a, it's got its own look, the old girl. But I, I don't know. I, I, com this compared with that, I like that. So um, I think it'll just look nice. But, but what he's done to me is, <laughs> I'm blaming him for everything today. That's fine. Is when I come over here to the Massey Ferguson 20, I've got new battery leads. But look at the top of the mud guards here. So guess what? That's the top off. But so these mud guards have got to have the treatment too. So they're the stabiliser bars for it. I didn't have any. Um, courtesy of Sparex S.184. Um, I'm going to paint them yellow before I fit them. I haven't even opened that yellow paint yet. I, I don't hold much hope of it being the exact right colour, but you know, too bad. Um, we're not that worried on this. Um, the little 135 here, you can see I've got all the leads and junk on the floor here just trying to get the battery charger in. But when I look at the charger there, yeah, it looks like we have a full charge now, so, so that's job done. Um, yeah, good thing. 
So we'll come out around here. So I've got the carry all on the forklift here and I've tidied up some of this to what it was. And I've got the rust converter there, it's etching in. But on these hungry boards, I've put a nut inside where they would slip into. And that way, if I pop a sign down there on a, say, a two by four steel frame or <clears throat> whatever I put it on, I can actually screw those bolts in and stop it from rattling around or falling out. And there's my timber. Now, I did have that stacked up. <coughs> Pardon me. I did have that all stacked up and I bumped it over. <laughs> and I got to, I better sit it up straight so it doesn't end up with a twist in it. But some of the wooded bunnings there, it's bloody terrible. Well, it's got twists and bows and all that in it. But um, anyway, um, I've had to buy the fatter ones. What are they? Yeah, they're 140. I, um, when, you, when you look at the Tasmanian oak, they do a 110, and you've only got to cut 10 mil off the side. With these fellas here, um, they do an 89 and then a 140. So I've got the 140, so I'm going to have to run down all them today with the saw. And um, it, it's nice dressed pine, so, but I'll have to run down with the saw, put the hole in for the boards. Um, rout out any little bits underneath and um, yeah I'll have to sling them up somehow and um, probably spray them with epoxy a couple of coats over the next week or so but um, if I can get the carry all done and that done and move along with the bonnet um, yeah look they'll be easy little jobs to do um, yes <laughs> see how we go I'd like to have the carry all done pretty soon so I can take it to shows and things so um, uh, yeah, I'm, it's just going Ferguson light grey like I said last week and um, to pop on the back of the 135 and run around town and um, take it up to the agro trend when we have it if we go and um, all that, it should be good. So anyway, that's probably it for this week. Um, we'll go for a bit of a quick walk out the front and have a look at what the day's doing. Looks like the sun's up. Yep, it's a lovely day. I've, I've started cutting some pallets up for firewood, just for kindling. But yeah, Sansa's sitting down here. So he just sits and watches the world go by. The sun's coming up and you can see the sky's nice and blue. And yep, looks like she's going to be a nice day. <laughs> 